they are talking about repositioning my prayer life. Okay? And uh, we looked at uh, the scriptural foundation for, for, for prayer. And I told you that uh, there are so many verses that actually speak about this. I just picked a few. Philippians chapter 4, verse uh, 6 and 7, that says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your request be known to God. All right? And uh, the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding shall guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then we read uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 17, that says, Pray without ceasing. And then we look at Colossians chapter 4 that actually says that devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and with a heart of thanksgiving. Now, and then we moved. We looked at the next component that uh, prayer actually enhances our relationship with God. All right? Prayer enhances our relationship with God. And then there are two things there that we looked at. Yeah? Number one was the issue that prayer actually helps us to build and nurture an intimate relationship with God. We moved from there and we went to the next component that we say not only that prayer helps us to build and nurture our relationship with God, but also prayer involves listening. And to me that was the major part of prayer. You have not prayed until you have mastered the art of listening from God. And we said many things there. And one of the things that we said is about communication. By definition, prayer is actually communication between man and God. And if that is true, that prayer is communication between man and God, then it goes without saying that communication is key. I mean, listening is critical in prayer. Because I understand that listening is one of the greatest components in communication. Yeah? You have not also communicated until you have mastered the art of listening. So prayer is the same. Many times, actually, we only speak and speak and tell God. You know, some people say, even I told God. Eh? I fasted for 45 days and I told God. You told him, correct. Thank you. But what did he say? What did he say? Yeye alikwambia nini? In all the hundred days that you fasted and prayed, Mungu alisema nini? What did he say? So friends, prayer involves listening. We talked about the issues of quietness. We talked about the, the issues of being still in the presence of the Lord. We talked about the issues of, uh, 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 you know, scripturally, prayerfully reading God's word in relation to what we are asking him. Okay? And then we moved from there and we talked about prayer as, um, you know, helping us to grow spiritually. Prayer actually helps us to grow spiritually. And there are two things there that we discussed about. Number one was alignment to God's will. That, that's why in, um, in Matthew, when Jesus was teaching his disciples on how to pray, okay, I think it's chapter 6, verse, verse 10, I think. When he says that uh, when we pray, we say, Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So whenever we pray, we must align ourselves with God's will. God takes so much interest in any prayer that actually is in line with his will. God will take keen interest with someone that is actually praying in the will of God. God will address, will answer that situation and very speedily. So prayer helps us actually to align our will with that of God. 
But we said something else. Right there. The second aspect there was that prayer is an avenue. Yeah? For, for, for confession and repentance. Prayer is an avenue for confession and repentance. You see, confession and repentance result actually into Christian transformation. It results into our transformation. We are actually changed. That's why 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, He is righteous and just. He is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So if we are cleansed from all our unrighteousness, then we are transformed. And we become very effective. So prayer offers that opportunity for us to confess. And I emphasize this part, that we must create safe space amongst us in the church that people can be able to confess and feel safe. Because the Bible says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another and you will be saved. You will be healed. So if healing is going to happen amongst us, there has to be some way of confession and then praying for one another. But if there is no safe space for me to be able to confide in you, if I am afraid, if I don't trust you with my information, then there will be problem in the church. You remember I gave an example of the three pastors that went to pray in early morning and then the move of the spirit was so heavy there and they decided to fulfill all righteousness by confessing their, their difficulties, their struggles with one another. The first pastor said he has a problem with the offering. Ikitolewa kuna vile tu anafila zima chukue kiasi. Nasikia. He has a problem with the finances of the church. These things happen. It's a temptation. Anybody can be tempted. So he confessed to his fellow pastors. And everyone was, ah, brother. Oh, that's, 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 we'll, we'll stand with you. The second one said, eh, my problem is girls. You know, by the way, three, the major three pitfalls of a pastor are girls, gold, and glory. Those are the major pitfalls. So the guy had a problem with the girls. Because as a pastor, girls in church, ah, wow, Dugu will stand with you. And then the third one, Akasema, wow, 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 wow. Brethren, my problem is the fact that actually I can't even wait to leave this place so that I can tell others of what you have just shared. Gossip. He had the problem with, he was actually enslaved by the demon of gossip. Did you know I have realized that many Christians actually suffer from this demon? They even spiritualize that demon and present it as a prayer item, you know. So they want to gossip, but in a prayer item, do you kiroho? Hey, brethren. Hey. Hey. Our brother. <laughs> anyway, today, I want us to move further. And allow, I will try to be quick today. Allow us to move further today <clears throat> and present this fact. That not only that prayer enhances our relationship with God and result into spiritual growth and transformation, but also actually prayer is a means of intercession yeah, and extending compassion to others. This is very important. Now, I want you to pick the points that I'm giving you. Don't just pick them in isolation. I want you to take them together now. 
and form prayer. Because those are the components. It helps us. It is a means of intercession. And in this place, we have, uh, we have two things that we need to discuss here. The first one is praying for others. So prayer creates an opportunity for us to pray for others. You know, many times when you hear people pray, you will hear me, me, oh my God, give me, 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 my son, my daughter, my father, my mother, me at my work, my husband and me, me and me, give me, give me, hallelujah, hallelujah, me, hallelujah, me, 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 throat. I have repeatedly said in this church, you are not created for yourself. You are a gift to the world. You are a gift to the world. And you must actually see yourself like so. That's why Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. We must be delivered from me and me and me that is actually still a very low level of praying you must grow by the way i've come to discover and i've said this here anytime you feel constrained about something a need that is so persistent in your life you have prayed about it, but it's still there. Reach out to someone else with a similar need and meet their need. Just reach out and meet the need of another person of that nature. And then see what God will do to you. When you take care of God's business, he takes care of your business. That's why the Bible says, consider others. Prefer, allow someone to go before you, after you, you know, after you. Sometimes in Naivas, when we queue to pay for our things, and then Kidudumutu atoke huko, aja kukate hapombele ingi hapombele yako. That is when we will know who you are. Would you please? Will you, honestly speaking, allow them to go ahead? Yet Jesus says, put others ahead of you. Sasa, God wants to test you whether you have grown as far as that is concerned. As simple as in a queue in an Ivers, and someone just comes with one item, alright, and you have a whole trolley, and then they see like that whole trolley, na ye akotuna ka packet of nani chewing gum. So he wants just to drop and then end the zak. Where? Hey. You will realize we have actually a long way to go. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all. Be made for all. Not just for you. For all people. This is an opportunity actually to pray for other people. Pray for the struggles of others. Pray that God fulfill the needs of others. When God gives you food, and you bless your food before you eat. Do you remember those people that haven't gotten anything in your prayer? Kusema Mungu na kushukuru. I thank you that you have given me food. But I ask you to remember those who haven't gotten anything. That somehow by your grace and your providence, they may have food then you start attacking your meal. But sometimes you say, thank you Lord 
for giving me this food. I am asking you for appetite. Which is okay. But where is the aspect of others? Do you know actually there are people that go without food? When you eat three meals in a day, there are people that hardly actually secure a meal in a day. And as a Christian, when God provides you with food, he should remind you that there are others that have no food. Then you remember them. That becomes an opportunity for you to remember those who do not have anything. You may not necessarily be able to give them food, but if you can, those that you can see, you can help. Kiasi, unas idea. But the many people around the globe, you just remember somehow that God will do something. So prayer helps us to pray for others. It gives us an opportunity to pray for other people. You see, Christians engage in intercessory prayer where they pray on behalf of others, seeking God's intervention and blessing for other people. Hallelujah. We should not be the people that rejoice in the misery of others. Eh. Alikuwa na jidai kimbele mbele kanisani. Eh, sasa kimemramba. Eh, sasa kimemramba. Sasa halafu unapata nini afu tumesema hivi? What do you gain as a Christian? Instead of carrying that burden and pray with them. You see, intercession praying reflects a sense of compassion, empathy and a commitment to the well-being of others. So as Christians, brothers and sisters, we need to be committed. We need to show compassion to others. We need to show compassion to other people. Now, the second aspect. You see, let me show you a couple of passages before. Look at this one. Luke 23 verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting clothes. Now, do you understand the scenario of his situation? Jesus came doing good. Yeah? Doing good to people. Healing their sick. Raising their dead. Feeding them. Healing their sick. And then they take him to the cross. They insult him. They undress him. Eh? And then he anasema, Baba, wasamehe. Eh? Huku wanagawanya nguo zake. Yeye huku wanawasamehe. Bwana suwe sana. How many of us can do that? How many of us can actually do that? Jesus is our example. Jesus is our example. Let's learn to forgive in prayer. Some of us, we are still holding grudges, bitterness. Let's learn to release, my friends. Let's learn to release. Let's learn to forgive others. Allow them to walk free. Allow them to go unpunished. Leave them in God's hands. By so doing, you are actually freeing yourself. By so doing, unajipatia uhai. But imagine carrying ten people. Kila wendako. Kazini, kwa bathroom, kwa bedroom. You are carrying people. I mean, how choky. Let them free. Let them go. Forgive them. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. Na huku wanagawanya nguo zake. Wanapiga kura. And then he forgives. There's this other one. Second Corinthians. <coughs> one eleven. That says, as you help us by your prayers. Just imagine, to pray for people is a way of actually helping them. Kuombea watu wengine ni njia moja ya kuwasaidia. He says, then many will give thanks on your behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many people. 
answer to the prayers of many people. Hallelujah. So, prayer helps us to be considerate of others. To help others. To show compassion to others. But also, intercession and compassion helps us in this way. To address global concerns. As a Christian, you must actually grow from an individual thinking, individual prayer items, personal prayer needs, to global prayer needs. That is how God has designed us here on earth to represent him globally. You can actually be here in Kilifi and affect what is happening in the Middle East. Are you aware that almost 30,000 people have died in Palestine? And the war still continues. And among those 30,000, the greatest percentage ni watoto wadogo that have nothing to do with the war. Babies. As a Christian, what are you doing? Are you praying for that? Are you aware that there is a problem in Sudan? Over 20 million people actually have been displaced in Sudan. They live in ship, 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 makeshift camps in Sudan. Are you aware as a Christian, when you live in your palatial house, in your six by six bed with doctor mattress wriggling around and having sweet dreams are you aware that there's 20,000 people that have been displaced they have no homes are you aware that in Ukraine millions of people have been displaced. Their homes completely destroyed. By the way, their, their towns in Ukraine, a whole town has completely been destroyed. Completely. And the people that used to live in that town, they had made investment there. They are now refugees. What are you doing? While in Kenya, we are complaining about housing levy. We want to build houses, decent houses for our people. Now we are complaining. Others, those houses that they build, they are being destroyed. <coughs> the point I'm trying to make is this. As a Christian, you need to think globally. That is the reason Jesus left us here. To pray for the peace of the world. Do you know that in Ethiopia there has been a, a war in Ethiopia for a very long time. A civil war in Ethiopia for a very long time. And it's as if... Do you know that in DRC there is war going on there? There is no peace. People are running back and forth every day. Did you know right now the Red Sea is the most dangerous sea right now? And they say that is one of the trade routes that has lots of volume of products. You say it is in Ukraine. It's far away from us. We will just enjoy life. Did you know that the world is just like a village? We depend on each other. We depend on each other. Ukraine and Russia are the greatest producers of wheat in the, in globally. So if there is war there, the prices of wheat will just go up. You will feel it. If there is war in the Middle East, oil and all these other products cannot reach us. Okay? The prices will go up. You will feel it. You will blame your president for nothing. 
Because you have not prayed for the global peace of the world. Alafu nalia, rice, rice is a small cut thing in the equation. You have a very critical position. That's why we must stand in the gap for the whole world. Look at what the Bible says. <laughs> in Jeremiah 29 verse number 7. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. If it goes under, you also go under. You understand? Brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to pray. You see, prayer is a powerful tool for addressing global issues, social issues of social justice, and promoting peace, global peace. It is a means of expressing concern for the world and seeking divine intervention in uh, challenging situations. Prayer answers things. Prayer moves the heart of God to respond to situations. In Jeremiah, no, it is in Ezekiel that God says, I look for a man amongst them who will stand in the gap so that I do not destroy the world. But I found none. I found none. In Isaiah, he says, Who shall go for us? Whom shall I send? Will you be the one? That we say, here I am, Lord. I will stand in the gap and pray for global peace. And pray for, 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 for the peace of the world. Pray. I mean, pray, pray. You know what is happening? Sometimes when I see globally what is happening, it breaks my heart. Do you know, by the way, in Cameroon, there is no peace in Cameroon? Oh, yes. In some parts of Cameroon. Yeah? Did you know that there were several coups in West Africa? Do you know what it means? You remember in 1982 there was an attempt for coup in Kenya. You know what happened? Friends, as an intercessor, your ears must be big enough to hear what is happening around the globe. Now, technology has made things a little bit easier for us. You can watch global news and see what is happening in the world. Some of you say, ah, the news are depressing. So you can't watch because they are depressing. You are a Christian. You are an intercessor. You need to know what is happening and ask God for solution. Ask God to intervene. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, not only that prayer <coughs> uh, becomes a means of intercession and compassion, but actually prayer itself involves faith and trust. I said this in my introductions. I said something to that effect. But you see, prayer involves faith. And trust. I have faith in God. And I trust. That when I pray. God will answer. When I pray. God will respond. Respond because I trust him. I have faith in his abilities. I know that my God is able. He will do it. That's why the apostle Paul would say. For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. Hallelujah. For I know whom I have believed. That's why in the book of Daniel the Bible says, Those that know their God. Wale wana umujua mungu wao ni nani na uwezo wake ni nini. They will do exploits. Trust me, you can change things in Russia while here.
You don't need to be living in State House to change the affairs of State House. You can do it right from here. Bonesos Fesan. You remember the man of God who was stationed in Dothan? You remember that man? The things that he used to do in prayer. Mpaka, the king of, uh, was it the Syrians? Yeah? They say that man of God knows. He sees everything that you do even in your bedroom. He hears everything that you say even in your bedroom. You can change things, man, through prayer. Bonus person. We cannot just change things by complaining and crying. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. Oh, Uchumi. Uchumi ni mubaya. Eh, Uchumi ni mubaya. Eh, ni Uchumi ni mubaya. Hata mungu anaelewa. Nana mekwambi. Pray about it. Pray about it. Now, you see, faith and trust, there are two things that I want us to see there. The first thing is about faith in action. Prayer is faith in action. Prayer is faith in action. If you have faith, then you will pray. Well, please move back. <coughs> Faith in action. Okay, there we are. First John 5, 14 to 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That's the confidence. That to kill, when we tell God something, he actually hears. Alright? And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, then we know that we have what we have asked of him. Now, that is faith. The first one is trust. The last part is faith. I have asked to a God that I know that he hears. And I already believe that he has heard. And because he has heard, I can rejoice because I know I have already received what I've asked of him. So there is no need of grumble, there is no need of complaining. But I can, that's why the Bible says, give thanks now. Give thanks. In all circumstances and in all situations. Because I know my God is able. Praise the Lord. Prayer is an expression of faith. Christians believe that God hears and answers prayers according to his wisdom and his timing. And that's what we believe. And I sincerely believe that God does answer prayer. My life, I've been a Christian for a while now. I've gone ups and down. I've in sunshine and I've been dark I've been in darkness. I've been on high mountains and I've been in the valleys and for sure I know that God answers prayer. I know that God does answer prayer. Not that I believe, I actually know that God does answer prayers. Because I have experienced it. Friends, engaging in prayer demonstrates a deep trust in God's providence, even when the outcome may not be immediately apparent. Engaging in prayer demonstrates a deep trust in God's providence, even when the outcome may not be immediately apparent. So, faith and trust. Prayer also helps us in this way. 
Hey, Jamel. Prayer helps us in this way. Let's have a look at this one. It helps us to cope with challenges. Prayer actually is a means to help us cope with challenges of this world. So instead of running to people to help you, running to the governor's office, running back and forth to everybody, run to God through prayer. It will help you to cope with some challenges. This is what the psalmist says. And I want us to read that particular psalm. He says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Oh, I believe we have fears. I have my fears. We do have fears. Many of us do. But we can pray so that God can deliver us from those fears. Hallelujah. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. Now, what do you do in your desperation, in your desperate moments? Because desperate moments in this life, they will surely come. So what do you do in those moments of desperation? Do you take a rope? And then... In those moments of desperation, the psalmist says, I prayed. Because desperate situations require desperate measures. And one of the first desperate measures that you need to take is actual prayer. Even before you think of anything else, Panza, prayer. In those desperate moments, Omba, pray. That demonstrates trust and faith in your God. Then pray. Some of us in those desperate moments, we go to social media. Look at me now. Do you think the world cares? Do you really think the world actually cares about those things that you post? You are in hospital bed, unachukua tari picha. Look what the devil has done. And then, so what? So what? Instead of praying, I've even seen people, actually, some people are very funny. At tomorrow at 8 a.m., I will be on board. Ndeges Jigani going to this place. Paka terrorist waka bomuyo ndege because of you. Yani, you are giving the devil ammunition to hit you. Itu zingine buwana. Talk to God about your journey and forget about social media. I haven't eaten anything since yesterday on social media. Do you think there is anybody who gives a damn that you have not eaten? Talk to God about your situation, Buana. Yani, you think you have followers, you think they are, they are your friends. Some people are interesting. I have, I have 2,000 friends on Facebook. Do you think they are your friends? Do you think they are your friends? And you say, hey, I am very popular. I have friends, 2,000 of them on Facebook. Are you sure they are friends? Friends don't just come easily, my friend. I am almost 50 years. Actually, I'll be, I'll be 50 years this year. Okay? And I have a handful of friends. Friends! Maximum of three! I'm talking of friends. You don't sleep and wake up and you have a friend, my friend. 
The most of the people that you have are your acquaintances. Fair weather. A symbiosis, symbiosis kind of a relationship. Ama nikani. Nipe nikupe mse. You are only important when you have something to give. Unasikia? Remove everything that you can give and see kama you will have friends. You will be all alone. That's why some people get so bitter. That, that everybody left me at my, my time of, uh, of need. All my friends ran away. They were not your friends. You don't know who a friend is. Honestly, you have no idea who a friend is. If that's what you think. Friends will never leave you. They will always be there for you. In the middle of the night, if you make a call, they will still do something. They will wake up and do something. If you cannot be able to call me in the middle of the night, I am not your friend. Yes, if you have to think, hey, then you are not, we are not friends. Because my friends, hata mke wangu anawajua. And he knows, wakipiga simu, hawata niita pastor bidi, hapana? Bidi, nataka tukutane, saa hii. Trust, ni tatoka, hata kama nusikuwa manane, tukakutane. Because I know, hawawezi kabisa, they can never tell me we have to meet now, if there is nothing. It is a desperate thing. They really need my help, without even explaining it. By the way, I am very much aware niko na washirika na niko na marafiki. Make no mistake about that. I am very much aware. So usifikirie vile na kushulikia sana ukafikiria mimi rafiki yako sana. Na kushulikia kama mshirika. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brother Chi. This is what I was saying. <laughs> There's a difference between a member of the church and a friend. All right? So, the relationship between me and members is different between me and my friends. So, don't feel bad when I treat my friends differently. Because they are my friends. If you all desert me, my friends will remain with me. And I am aware of that. Even when I sin, alright, and become a laughing stock to everyone, my friends will still stick with me. That one I guarantee you. Your friend will carry your shame together with you. That is a friend. But acquaintance will desert you one by one, all of them. Jesus thought that he had friends on the 12 disciples. There was even one that he used to refer him the beloved disciple. Wait the day he was arrested. They all deserted him. All of them. With the exception of Peter who followed him from afar. In the cover of darkness. And you imagine you have so many friends, so you, you are proud you have so many friends. You wait until the rubber hits the road. Then you realize actually you are very poor. Work on relationships. Friends don't just come like this. It takes years to build friendship. So in my desperation, I pray. After I have prayed, then I will inform my friends. Then I will inform my friends. You know, there are people who have a habit of everything. Pastor, pray with me, Pastor. Ah. Let me be honest with you today. I have grown. Okay? I have actually grown. 
Nowadays, I pray for members with understanding. You see, prayer provides a source of strength and comfort during difficult times. It offers Christians a way to cope with life challenges, uncertainties, and adversities. But also prayer, my friends, prayer, look at this one. Prayer also enhances community and worship. Oh yes, prayer enhances community and worship. When we tell you to come and pray, we are not just asking you to come and ask for things from God. We want to build community. We want to build community. Sometimes I used to go to prayers just because of my friends. I will actually go because this guy is my friend. So I will go because he is my friend. And I realize the more we do that, the more we bond. <coughs> Recently, there's another gentleman, a friend of mine, that one is actually a friend. We used to pray a lot together. And even when we wanted to start this church, we used to come with him here for prayer walks. We would walk and pray here with that gentleman. So he had some challenges. Real challenges. And then... Um, for a while, for a couple of weeks... I did not go to see him. But it was deliberate. I did deliberate because I wanted to give space for him to do certain things. So when I went now to see him, he told me this. I thought that you had also deserted me. I was still struggling in my mind to accept or to come to terms that probably you also have deserted me. And I told him, no. That is not possible. It can never happen. Yeah, it can't. And he said, that gives me life. That gives me life. And then I called the wife. The wife had gone to the U.S. And I told her now, I was talking to your husband. He said, yeah, he told me. Thank you very much. Thank you. I knew. I knew. I knew. You are the only person that cannot leave this man. He said, because of that, let me even send you some lunch. Mm. <laughs> you think it's a joke? So he sends me 10,000 shillings. I just eat it for friendship for sake. If you don't have friends, Sharia Kobos. Ajua William. William and I say, Ma, Mana Hajawahi. Anyway, we are talking about, this is the last one, community and worship. Now, we want to look at two things and then we conclude. They are very brief. The first thing I want us to see here about community and worship through prayer is the fact that it creates an atmosphere for corporate praying. Corporate praying. If you have never known, my friend, there is power in praying together. There is synergy. Let me give you big terms. Corporate prayer releases exponential power. Exponential power. You see, Christians often pray together in communal settings, such as church services, 
emphasizing the communal aspect of faith. Jesus, by the way, deliberately emphasized the significance of praying together in Matthew 18 and 19. Look at this one. Matthew 18 and 19. Again, I assure you, if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Now, Jesus ananza kwa kusema, I assure you. Assuredly, I tell you. If two come together, are you seeing now the power of coming together? Do you see the importance when I tell you, please come together, let's come and pray? There is power in agreement. There is power in agreement. Not only, by the way, I will come, my next sermon that follows is actually the benefits of corporate praying. You don't want actually to miss them. The benefits of corporate praying. Ile faida tu ya kushika mkono, holding the hand of another person, and let's agree and pray. Heavens open. God respects the faith that comes in agreement. Do you remember the disciples praying somewhere for Peter? Until the place they were was shaken. Imagine it's not a joke, it is real. The place shook. Yes, the place shook. I remember we used to pray until... There was a lady who had, who had, who had uh, some, some spirits, and I called them these genies, something. You know. So she had them in her own house. And then the mistake she did was to rent us a section of the same house we live with her. Alijua Hajuiba. There is power in prayer. You pray, immediately, actually, you can hear response. Someone is being choked. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, very early in the morning, she's at our door. At six. At six in the morning, mama. And then she complains. Uh, but she says nothing. Oh, you know... I don't stop you from praying. You know, even me, I also went to a Catholic school. You know, and she will say all those things without actually saying nothing. And we continue to pray until she had to remove her genius and build like a small room. We cannot stay in the same house with my genius, but they have to be removed. And they were removed. There is power in prayer. There is power in prayer. I remember we used to pray in our home, corporately praying in our home loud. Until when we go to school, there's some other guys in school that they'll ask, Kwani nyinyi? Hamlali? Munalala sangapi? Kambia sisi kifika saa tatu, saa tatu, saa ine watu shalali. Sasa mbona waku naimba the whole night? Ah, sema okay. The moment actually you establish an altar of prayer, even in your home, I believe angels take charge even after you go to sleep. So when witches try to come in, they hear people singing too. They hear people singing. Eh? I remember one witch telling us in my hearing, at you people, you have been protected. You know, in Kiswahili, mume, mume gangwa. Eh? You have been protected until you cannot be witched. And then you are saying, Jesus, 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 you are Now that tells you the power of prayer. Even hell feels it, knows it. I have been asked several times, Unasumbua waze. You are disturbing the elders. I said, but I'm in my house, I have never gone to any elder. 
power of prayer. You can disturb things that are in the U.S. right here. In Jesus' name. If your brother disappeared in the U.S. and is just loitering there, he has nothing, you can bring them home through prayer in Jesus' name. You understand? If your husband does not come to church, you can bring them to church through prayer, not by the power of conviction and convincing. You know, sometimes we think you can convince. Ladies, they bring CDs to their husbands, yeah, they bring magazines, they send them videos, they think they can convince them. You can only do it through your knees. But if you involve another person, it becomes even more powerful. Hallelujah. Finally, Kabisa, prayer is a way, is a way of uh, is a way of acknowledging God's sovereignty. Okay? So when we pray, we acknowledge God's sovereignty. That God is sovereign. Buenas son. That God is sovereign. That God is in control. That God is above everything. You know, the, summit, the, the writer of Second First Chronicles says, You as O Lord is the greatness. The power and glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. And you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to, make, to give strength to all. Prayer. Is a way of acknowledging God's sovereignty. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God.